and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. My name is Cody. Now this is the point where I usually try to say something amusing, but it's almost become a cliche that when board game review shows such as ours review Freedom the Underground Railroad, that they take a more serious, less humorous approach. The Discriminating Gamer will be no different. Freedom the Underground Railroad from Academy Games is a game about slavery and the abolitionist struggle in the United States prior to and during the U.S. Civil War. Now, I talked it over with Sean, and we decided that a song probably wasn't the best fit for this episode. So no song this week, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at this game. Hi, I'm Chase. You might remember me as the guard from the Discriminating Gamer PSA number 2, A Supervillain Speaks Out. Freedom, the Underground Railroad is a cooperative game where you take on the roles of abolitionists in antebellum America. You may play as the stockholder, the preacher, the conductor, or others. Each player has unique abilities on their roll card, including a special ability that can be used once during the game. Players must then prepare the plantations and the slave market. Players place cubes representing the slaves on most spaces in the southern plantations. Then players create a deck of eight cards for the slave market, each with spaces for several slaves. Each space on the slave market cards are filled with cubes. The slave market cards will act as a timer for the game. Next, players will prepare the abolitionist cards. These cards come in three different colors representing time periods. The first period is 1800 to 1839, the second is 1840 to 1859, and the third is 1860 to 1865. This is important because these cards contain actual historical events and figures that influence those periods. Into each of these decks, you'll shuffle opposition cards, which will work against the players. Once the decks are prepared, you'll place them in the respective period on the board. You'll also place tokens on the board denoting slave catchers, as well as fundraising tokens, conductor tokens, and support tokens. The goal of Freedom the Underground Railroad is to help slaves escape from the plantations north into Canada, which, as part of the British Empire, had abolished slavery in the 1830s. The number of players and the difficulty level you want determines how many slaves must make it to Canada in order for the players to win. Conversely, if the slaves lost portion of your victory condition card is filled, the players lose the game. Turns play out in phases. First, players roll the slave's catcher die, which determines where and how far the slave catchers move. If a slave catcher ends its turn on the same space as a slave, that slave is then transferred to the slave market cards. Next, you have the planning phase, where each player may buy or take up to two tokens, conductor, fundraising, or support. Conductor and fundraising tokens can be used during the action phase, but you will not want to neglect the support tokens. You cannot advance to the next historical period until all the support tokens for the current period have been purchased. It's important that players talk to each other during this phase to see how well they can work together to get the most done during the action phase. During the action phase, each player can take a number of actions, provided they have the money and the ability to accomplish them. Players can play conductor tokens. These tokens determine how many slaves and how far they can move. You want to be very careful when helping slaves move north to freedom, however. If you move a slave onto a slave catcher path, the slave catcher of that color is attracted one space in your direction. This can lead to slaves being caught if you're not careful, but it can also be a useful tool in pulling slave catchers away from other slaves. Fundraising tokens give you money based on where slaves are located at different periods in the game. You can also use character special abilities, or you can buy and use abolitionist cards from the queue. During the slave market phase, the lowest slave market card is removed from the board, and all of the slaves upon it must be placed in plantations. For every slave that cannot be placed on a plantation for lack of room, that slave goes to the lost slave section of the victory conditions card. Finally, during the lantern phase, the rightmost card in the abolitionist card queue is discarded, and the remaining cards slide. Players then check for victory conditions. If the game continues, a new card is drawn from the present period and placed in the leftmost spot. The players then pass the first player token clockwise. And that is essentially the game. Now first of all, we're going to go ahead and talk about how the game plays, and then we're going to take a look at its theme. Freedom the Underground Railroad is a hard game. It's a very difficult game to win, and that's not a bad thing. You really should lose a cooperative game about 70% of the time. I mean, who would want to play a cooperative game that was easy? What's the fun in that? The game was hard, in a good way. 
I enjoyed several of the mechanics employed in freedom. I thought that the way that slaves appear from the slave market, which doubled as a timer for the endgame, was unique and interesting. Because of the dice, there is some randomness in the way slave catchers move, and I would have liked something a little more, I don't know, less random. The game ensures that you have to spread your attention evenly in order to ensure the overall success of the slaves. Are you going to move slaves steadily up the Midwest, or try to rush them through New England? You are constantly made aware that you may need to sacrifice a slave along the way in order to allow more to move north. And that is the crux of the game. Keep the slaves moving. Essentially, this is a game of navigating traffic jams. How best can you use your conductor tokens to move the slaves and create more spaces on the board before you get overwhelmed in the plantations when the new slave market card arrives? Players have to work together to plan the slave movements if they want to win. Campaigning for funds in the game was excellent. It strikes a good balance between keeping slaves moving on the board and keeping the game moving forward. I was less impressed with the individual character abilities. They just didn't seem too important or insignificant enough to make a large enough impact. There are many games out there that boast a cooperative mechanic, but Freedom the Underground Railroad really forces players to work together, more than most cooperative games out there. The way that player turns are handled is just great. I never got the feeling that one person was in control of the action. We all have important jobs to do. Overall, despite a few problems here or there, Freedom the Underground Railroad is a fun game that I really enjoy playing. Now we'd like to talk about the theme of the game, slavery. This is history. This is a very uncomfortable history that the United States is still dealing with today. Now the question is, is this topic appropriate for a board game? a medium that's associated in most of the general public's mind with frivolity and triviality. Now, I have a master's degree in history, and I teach at Salt Lake Community College. In fact, the reason I became a professional historian was because when I was 12 years old, I played a game called Axis and Allies. That game started a lifelong fascination for me about Nazi Germany and World War II. I, I wanted to know how and why those things happened. And that's why I think Freedom the Underground Railroad is not just a fun game, I think it's an important game. It's an important game because it can spark questions and discussions, particularly with young people, about the experience of American slavery. And once those questions pop up, people will want to learn more. The abolitionist cards provide a wonderful historical backdrop every turn, and the game's rulebook is full of information about this significant moment in American history. I'd readily introduce this game to any age group, if not for the fun gameplay, then for the history lesson. The game's theme meshes really well with its gameplay. If this was a two-player or a team game where some players played as, as the slave catchers, it just wouldn't work. The Fight for Freedom is an idea that everyone can get behind, which makes this a perfect cooperative title. The game really treats its subject matter with the respect and intelligence it deserves. Freedom the Underground Railroad is also an uncomfortable game. Just like the history it recreates. Freedom the Underground Railroad is a tough game that will force you and your friends to work together. Like most great games out there, you'll be making tough decisions throughout. It's also an important game that will spark uh, important discussions about history and the institution of slavery. Our recommendation? Buy it. Buy it. Please somebody help me again and I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been please somebody help me on the solid ground it's a long time and I'll be dying if you're interested in learning more about the institution of slavery in America we recommend you check out the following books on the subject Bound for Canaan the epic story of the Underground Railroad America's first civil rights movement by Fergus and Bordwick the Slave Community, Plantation Life in the Antebellum South by John W. Blassingame. The White Man's Burden, Historical Origins of Racism in the United States by Winthrop D. Jordan. And Soul by Soul, Life Inside the Antebellum Slave Market by Walter Johnson.